Hello, I'm Richard Tendick. Today we're going to be talking about how you're going to take and make a bowl on the table saw. This is uh, the, all the information about this are, uh, is contained in an article in the April-May issue of American Woodworker. The jigs that we're going to be using, this is the one I call the hollowing jig and this is a coping jig. The details on how to make these are found in the article and I'm not going to get into exactly how to make them. But basically they consist of a sheet of MDF, particle board, plywood, whatever, with the mounting hardware on it, which locks it into the miter slot. The hole then will take the blank like that and you will then turn the blank as you raise the blade. This will cause the bowl to be hollowed out for the bowl aspect of it. This is called a coping jig. You take the blank, you place it in here, and as you raise the blade, you're spinning it, and it cuts a cope on the side of the bowl. At the same time, at the, after you finish the, uh, the coping, then you will stop and you will use the saw blade to create some decorative lines for the bowl. So let's get started. I'm going to mount up the, uh, the jigs and start showing you how to turn the bolt. Alright, we've positioned the uh, hollowing jig on this saw and we place the hardware into the miter slot. Now I've also lined up the back of the jig with the edge of the cast iron table. This is for repeatability. You'll always want to wind up uh, being able to make the same bowl the same way every time. I've also installed an 8 inch dado blade here. I've used uh, alternating top bevel blades, but the problem is that they wind up giving me a very striated and uh, hard, difficult surface to work with afterwards. The flat top of the dado blade gives me an excellent uh, finish. You place the blade in it and you make sure that the teeth are below the level of the tabletop. With this below, you're fine when you turn the saw on. If it's up even a little bit, it'll jam into the wood and blow the circuit breaker for your saw. So we're going to place this in and we will give it a couple of turns and I'll show you how we're progressing. Once the blade has come to a complete stop, you can lift it off and you can start seeing how your cut is progressing. Okay, at this point we've got a diameter of roughly six inches. As you get closer to the six and a half inch uh, diameter, inside diameter that you're looking for, you have to be very careful. You don't want to go over. You can't put the wood back in. So remember that for every sixteenth of an inch you raise a saw blade, you're going to change the diameter by approximately an eighth of an inch. So we have with six inch and we're headed for eight or six and a half inches, we're looking at a uh, couple more turns and we should be there. Now, you want to keep your vacuum handy because every time you pull the bowl off, you want to vacuum up all of this sawdust because otherwise your bowl will then sit back on the sawdust and give you a wrong diameter cut. All right, now, once you've reached the six and a half inch diameter, what you need to do is, the, for the final cut, turn it around two or three times extra with the blade at the final height, and that'll give you a much smoother interior. 
Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the bowl over and we're going to cut a very shallow two and a half inch diameter uh, dish on the back side. The purpose of this is to give the bottom of the bowl a finished look when you're all done. Okay, we've now finished turning the top and the bottom of the bowl and we're ready to move on to cut the cope around the outside. In preparation for that, the first thing I did was I changed the saw blade back to a 10 inch saw blade. Now I've used all different types of saw blades and I find that uh, there's only two types of saw blades that really give a very good smooth finish which will eliminate a lot of sanding later on. One is the triple grind and the other is the rip. I'm using a rip saw today so we're going to cut the cope using that. Place this into the jig. Again, it's been aligned with the back of the saw. The saw blade is down below the level where it will be in contact with the wood. You place your blank in there, holding it down, turn the saw on, and then raise it up. But we've added one extra feature here. We've attached a shop vac to the back. The reason for this is that we get a lot of sawdust out of this, and if you didn't have the, uh, the shop vac on it, you'd wind up uh, smothering the whole process in sawdust. So make sure that you have a good shop vac hooked up to it. Ready? Here we go. The first few times around, you'll have just a minimal amount of uh, material removal. The big bulk will come when you get further up into the, uh, the bowl. Now, as you go, you want to make sure that you have approximately a half inch left at the very top for the rim of the bowl. Alright, I've stopped the cut on this one halfway through. So you, now you see where the cut has started and how it's progressed along to the back side. Here, I'll place this back in and continue the cut and then as I said I will go right up to where you have approximately half inch left on the top for the rim. We've just finished the last cut. I have a half inch here on the rim and for the last two cuts that I made to get to that half inch I raised the blade just ever ever so slightly to give myself the best possible finish on the outside of the bowl. This of course will give you a much better chance of sanding it down without a lot of extra work. Now if you notice on the top of the bowl, what I've done is I've placed a series of little dashes around the outside. They are at approximately every 10 degrees. So there's 36 little marks that I've made and I stepped it off with a compass or divider in this manner right here to make sure that it comes out exactly right. The purpose of that is that I will line up with a mark that I have made on the inside of my jig right here, which lines up with this line. The last cut now, I've left the blade exactly where it was. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to place this bowl back into the jig and I'm going to line up a mark on the outside with the mark on the jig. In order to make sure that I get all of them done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark on the inside of the bowl to, to tell me when I've made all the cuts all the way around. So we place it back in, turn the saw on, crank it up an eighth of an inch, 
and then take it back to where it originally was. Rotate the bowl and do it again. I've just made the first cut and you can see that what it does is it gives the perfect alignment. It's the same radius as the cope of the bowl and it goes down inside approximately a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch just enough to give it a little bit of a decoration there. We will now continue this with the rest of the way around. All right, we've finished the last of the decorative grooves all the way around the outside of the bowl, and it gives it a very nice looking texture to the outside. What I've done on others and in the one in the article is that I cut a small groove around the outside using a rabbiting bit in a, uh, a router table. This gives, uh, just so you don't actually see the little notches coming out of the edge. But other than that, you now have a finished bowl except for the sanding and applying the finish. Now if you're planning on using this for any food whatsoever, make sure you use a food grade safe finish.